Cold late night so long ago When I was not so strong, you know Pretty men came to me Never seen eyes so blue, you know I could not walk away, it seems We'd seen each other in a dream Seemed like he knew me He looked right through me She's worried, growing up in a hurry. Come on home, girl, mama cried on the phone. Too soon to lose my baby and my girl should be at home. But try to understand, mama, I said try to understand. Try, try, try to understand. He's a magic man. reassure you that yes yes it is it is me miss stephanie i know um uh no it is me you guys um i just i think i should talk about the elephant in the room right now and uh that is i cut my hair so if you didn't recognize me you're on the right channel don't switch your channel don't go to you porn stay with us um i did i just um i have a little segment that i've come up with now it's called how to get out of your family's will and it's based on true events from my life Pretty sure that's coming. So I decided because I cut my hair, it was a very major thing for me. It was very, for 20 years I had hair that was 10 inches longer for those of you who don't or if you're seeing me for the first time. So it, it was a very big change and that I've done in the last 20 years. So I decided to do what any person does when anything major happens in their life nowadays, put it on Facebook, right? Because that makes it official. So I put a post that I thought personally was very funny and I said, well, I'll be darned. Yes, I can confirm. I've done something I haven't done in 20 years. Yes, it involved eight inches. No, it didn't hurt. <laughs> and I just let people assume like what they want to think from that. Well, my mom was not very happy with that post at all. So um, I heard about it. And she called me and I said, Mom, please, like, really, I list myself on my site as an international dame of mystery. I don't think anyone's actually taking my, my page very seriously. But she was, you know, and I also said, Mom, you know, listen, it was a lot better than the original post, which I wanted to post, was that, yes, I've gone and done it. I have chopped eight inches off my hair, which is more than I've gotten in the last few weeks. <laughs> but I didn't put that, right? Because that's even worse. And my grandma is also my friend online. So she did text me, and she says, 
And you know, I, after I tried to reason with her that it's okay, mom, people really don't, they're not going there. They think it's funny. She says, yes, but, and that would have been worse. She did agree with me. And this is a real text. I'm not trying to hurt you or give you, just give you constructive criticism. Comments like that will not attract the rich, good looking, smart, funny, classy, stable, loyal, and hardworking man that a beautiful, smart, and funny young woman like me deserves. To which I responded, don't worry, mom, I'm not friends with people like that anyway. <laughs> and uh, they can't even access my page because of all of my security. My privacy settings are so, they're like stronger than a Republican dating, you know, voting on anything good for anybody else. Ooh. So um, anyway, that was it. So unfortunately, guys, you, we were supposed to have Hall and Oates here today, but um, unfortunately, um, I don't know if I should say this online, but Daryl had uh, an enema. It didn't go very well. <clears throat> but... Luckily, we have been saved because their cousins are here on, they're in town. So, please give it up for Alejandro and Oates. When I want to get the viento and eat the web in all other places, como Mexico, Paraguay, Argentina, Spain, and the quiero mucho, realmente, the quiero mucho. What I want, you got. Estamos aquí en Brooklyn. Yo vengo de Queen. Es muy lejos de aquí para venir. What I want, you got, and it might be hard to handle. Like a flame that burns a candle. Like a candle burns a flame. When I got a cold stack of thoughts and dreams to scatter. Them all together, and I can't explain. I can't see the keys. What are you?
Because your kiss Tu beso no puedo resistir Because your kiss is what I miss Cuando apagas la luz
She wanna come out at night The lean and hungry time Nothing is new I've seen her here before Watching and waiting Oh, she's sitting with you But her eyes are on the door So many are paid to see What you think you're getting for free The woman is wild or She can't tame by the purr of jack you want Money's the matter If you're in it for love You ain't gonna get too here today at the joint. We want to give a special hello to uh, some of our people that are watching around the world, of course, and uh, all the people here in Brooklyn. Thank you. So give yourselves a big hand for coming out on Sunday. Hello. So <clears throat> Alejandro was really, really good. And uh, so is Oat. So thank you guys so much for coming in. I hope that Daryl feels much better. We have a very special treat for you guys right now. We have the wonderful storyteller, Emma Gordon. So we are excited to welcome her back to Ms. Stephanie's house. Um, just a briefly about her, she was raised in Sydney, Australia, and she made her way around the world before she landed here in New York City. She trained at the Neighborhood Playhouse School of Theater and as a teaching artist, and the voice of Ruby the Cat on an educational web series called www.curiosityville.com. I'm not, I don't think I'm letting the cat out of the bag on this one, but she's also expecting her first child, which is an amazing thing. So without further ado, you guys, please welcome Emma Gordon. Hello. Hi. Is that good? Hi. <coughs> um, it was a cold New York January. The time in January when they shut off the lights, they shut off the Christmas music, the holiday music, and we all fall into a depressed lull until we see our first crocus in about March or late February. I was shopping at, on Queens Boulevard. Uh, I had gone to return some Christmas presents because my um, lovely husband tends to buy things two sizes too small, which some people would find frustrating. I find it endearing. <laughs> but it happens every year, and so I went back to return them. I went to Century 21. And then I went to Panera Bread. 
and I got an Asiago cheese bagel, lightly toasted, chive and garlic cream cheese, delicious, my favorite. And then I went to Marshall's and I got a candle, the holiday smelly type. And then I saw the Gloria Jean's coffee shop, which we have in Australia too, so I nostalgically wanted to buy one. And I had my coffee and I waited for the Q58 bus. There was a mound of ice on the ground, covered in crap, New York crap, gone gray. And we all had to step over the mound of ice to get to the bus. I got my favorite spot, the part at the back, uh, this kind of raised, and, and there's a little bar there, and it kind of feels like you're on a ride. That's my favorite spot. And so I smelled my candle, I checked my phone, played a little Tetris, and before I knew it, I was at my stop. I pulled the yellow thing, and the doors opened, and I saw a mound of ice again. And so I took a step back, and I launched myself over the ice and landed, nailed it, on the sidewalk. Perfect score. Russian judges, give me a 10. <laughs> but I was missing something. It wasn't my bag, and it wasn't the candles. It was my hearing. In my right ear, I had this sound, this incredibly noisy crackle sound that was so loud, it felt like I, I couldn't hear anything else. And on my way from the stop to the house, my apartment, I, I started sticking my finger in my ear and blowing my nose, and my, my ear was just completely blocked. And I got home and, and had a hot shower and I took a couple of Advil and figured that it would just go away. It was disconcerting, but I, it would just go away. So I went to sleep with the, with the TV on and fell asleep. I woke up the next morning and the static sound was still there, loud as can be. And I was lying on my left ear facing my husband who was talking to me, but I couldn't hear him. And I was saying, huh, what? And then eventually I lifted my head and I heard him say, I said, I love you, good morning. And I was like, oh, fuck. I couldn't hear a thing he was saying. So I went to the doctor. My, a thing about Australians is that we're incredibly matter of fact. We have um, a coat, for example, we have a coat in Australia that claims to keep you as dry as a bone, so we call it a dry as a bone. Uh, we have a room in my house where I grew up uh, that's big, so it's called the big room. So I usually have a pinch more creativity than this, but um, I went to see my doctor, who I call Bad Lipstick Doctor, because every time I see her, she has this coral, shiny lipstick on that matches her nails. She's from Romania, and she's very open about the fact that she works at the clinic because she can't afford the malpractice insurance. And I don't really judge her for this because I don't have insurance anyway. So I tell her my story, and she, uh, and she says, you know what, um, chew gum. Chew gum for five days. If it doesn't work, we come back. Okay, so I chew gum for five panic-filled, brain-exploding, noisy, noisy days. And then I tell my friend about the, the, the gum story, and she's like, oh, honey, you need to go see an ENT. Uh, and she gave me the number of the Metropolitan Opera's ear, nose, and throat doctor. And I was like, oh, fuck, I can't afford this. And she said, no, 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 just make sure that they don't stick anything up your nose. That's, that's where it gets expensive. <laughs> so I walked into this fancy um, doctor's office and met the ladies at the front, and I just said, hi, I'm uninsured. Please don't put anything up my nose. <laughs> and they said, um, they were nice, and they were said, uh-huh, okay. And then I charge my debit card $250. And I go in and I see the doctor, and she's an ENT opera doctor, and she's lovely. And I tell my story as I go, as the chair raises, I explain what happened. And then she pulls out this instrument, uh, and I saw it, and I said, oh my god, don't put that up my nose, I can't afford it. She said, it's a tuning fork. <laughs> I was like, oh, right, OK, of course. And she, uh, tapped the, the side of the chair and she held it up to my ear and asked me a question. I said, what? And the chair started to lower and she said, yeah, you have sudden inner ear hearing loss. It's really rare. <laughs> and I uh, thought, that, uh, that, that can't be, like, explain. And she said, well, it's really weird and it really happens to anybody, but you have it. 
she said that I should get an MRI and I should see an audiologist. And uh, she put me on a, a course of steroids. And so the audiologist confirmed what the opera ENT had said was that I had hearing loss, significant hearing loss in this ear. And the MRI came back normal and I started my course of steroids. But I was, to say I was unsatisfied with this response is a complete understatement. So I wanted a second opinion, but I was out of money. So I asked my dad, and I borrowed 500 bucks from my dad, and I researched another ENT. When I say researched, I just really went online and I found the nicest looking person um, that looked kind and funny, and, and he took walk-ins. So I went to see him, and he was kind of grandfatherly, and I was excited, at least, to get to see him. He recognized my accent immediately, and and uh, started talking to me about Australian beaches and surfing. And so as the chair goes up, we were chit-chatting, and he took one look into my ear, and chair goes down again. He said, yeah, you have sudden in-ear hearing loss. It's really rare. <laughs> and I said, well, once I want to hear that, and, it, and it's not associated with this, anything, like it's winning the lottery, it's very rare. Hardly ever happens to anybody, and you won. But not this day. I instantly started crying, and he said, oh, hon, you can always get a hearing aid. And I thought, oh, started crying even harder, and he said, well, listen, Emma, the thing that we were trying to rule out was that you don't have MS, and it's not a brain tumor, so actually today is a good day. And he had a point, because a couple of years ago I had melanoma, and, and it's quite possible it could have been a metastasis tumor somewhere and, and it wasn't and that was a good thing and I knew that but I cried all the same and he wrote me a prescription for an antidepressant and I held on to it and I said is this gonna help <laughs> and he said no you just won't care so much <laughs> so I was at this point I was about a week into my steroids and I don't know if you've been on steroids before but you can get incredibly hungry and then incredibly not hungry and you, I couldn't sleep and I paced a lot and it was on one of these sleepless nights that I had an epiphany. I had completely figured out why I had lost my hearing and what to do about it. It was so simple. I was, comp I was thrilled. I knew exactly what to do, and I kept it to myself, and I was so excited I couldn't sleep. And the next day, I went to Century 21. Then I went to Panera Bread, and I had an Asiago cheese bagel lightly toasted garlic chive cream cheese. Then I went to Marshall's and I got another candle. It was so simple. And then I got a coffee from Gloria Jeans and I waited in front of the pile of ice for the Q58. I was so empowered. I knew exactly how this would go and I was so pleased with myself and so proud and I felt so good. And I got on the bus and I had to wait a while, but I got my spot. I'm in a place that makes me feel like I'm on a ride, and I smell my candle, and I checked my phone, and I tried to play Tetris, but it was the longest trip ever. So I started to envision the conversations I would have with, with Bad Lipstick Doctor and, and Opera ENT and Nice Guy Doctor and, and telling them that I had fixed this, I'd cured this myself, and I fantasized about being on the news. And then finally came to my stop and I pulled the yellow thing and I got down to the front of the doors and I saw the pile of ice there, the doors opened and I leapt off the bus, landed perfectly on the ground and I was, I could barely, I could hardly believe it. It didn't work. <laughs> and I ran home and I fell into my husband's arms sobbing, saying, but it worked on Freaky Friday the mo movie. <laughs> and he advised me to call a friend who knew a little bit about this stuff. And my friend told me, laughed first sympathetically, and then said, oh, sweetheart, no, you're having steroid psychosis. <laughs> uh, and he explained that there was no way that I could have reversed the diagnosis by retracing my steps, just like in the movie Freaky Friday <laughs> and other such movies. And he said he was really sorry, but I was having a manic episode. 
And he said, listen, I'm sorry this has happened to you. Um, get checked out, but um, I should tell you something. Don't get off those steroids too fast because you might kill yourself. <laughs> and actually, that's true. Like the, they do tell you on the, on the ads, like if you have suicidal thoughts, <laughs> I mean, they're not fucking kidding. And those movies that do do this, like the, the ones where you reenact this, something happens and, and, and two characters swap, or they always learn something. And I was like, well, what did I learn from my little manic episode? Well, I mean, I, my left ear works, that's great. I could get a hearing aid. It's not a brain tumor. These are all wonderful things. But the thing that I learned, the thing that I got out of it, was that I've never been so sure of myself in my entire life as I was when I was retracing my steps. <laughs> I was so fucking sure of myself and so proud and empowered, it was almost worth it just to have that experience. And I thought to myself, I had to actually lose my mind and my hearing to, to know what that felt like. And from that point on, I really did endeavor to, to reenact that feeling, but just without the drugs. Oh, no, no, wait. No, it's this one, but anyway. <laughs> I know how that feeling is. Cause I is it really common? I don't know. Something, I'm a musician, so I always wear earplugs everywhere, but I think it is a lot more common than everybody. I know, she's like checking her ear, and I was like, wait, can I hear? <laughs> um, but this city, I think, is making everyone deaf. And I say that judging on the fact that sometimes when I'm on the train, I can hear clearly <laughs> people's headphones. Like, these kids are oh, going to yeah. be deaf by the time, so, you know, mm. they're my age or, you know. Thank you. So um, this part of the show, so we are going to ask Emma some questions because all of our artists that come on, we're always very curious as to what makes them tick, like their creative process. Like we love when they share that with us. So, so Miss Emma, yes, pick a number, as you know, one yes. through 18. Eight. Number eight. What is the thing that takes out most of your time outside of creative work? that is required to make it happen? The job. The job you gotta have to pay your life. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. No, in this, in New New York, every artist I know has usually like a nine to five job yeah. of some sort. It is. I wish there was a better answer to that, but that is without question the thing that sucks the life out of your- The soul. <laughs> the soul out of your art is having to have some other job. And like, if, you, if you're lucky, that job is a creative job. And I've endeavored to make sure that that happens, but- when you spend nine to five or Actually, ten to six or something. Yes, exactly. There is no such thing as nine to five anymore. We just like to put that out there because it's always like nine to six, 37 o'clock. So yeah. yeah, that's enough to kill anybody's creativity. It kills it. Would you like to pick another number? Sure. Um, 12. 12. Name something you did that you considered a failure and what did you learn from it? And do you still consider it a failure? Hmm. It's a, it's a three-part question. <laughs> How do you repeat consider any of that? Consider it a failure. Yes. Um, I wrote a solo show, and, um, and I sent it out all over the place to festivals, and it didn't get in anywhere, <laughs> like, at all. <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck, I must suck. This must be terrible. But I put so much energy into, like, this particular show, and it didn't get into anywhere, and I thought, that's all right, well, fair enough. And then I decided to not completely give up on it, but take it, and then um, I just started rewriting it yes. with this group um, in the city. And they're all older, and they're, um, they're all, like, lovely. And they don't give you criticism at all. They just tell you that you're great. That was my experience. And so I would go on Wednesdays, and I'd just read a bit of my solo show, and they would slow amazing. clap. And they were like, this is amazing. And I was like, okay. Okay, so even though I nobody seemed to want to touch this show, um, I, I I still and and I did sort of stop writing it for that reason because I got completely rejected. Um, I don't think it was a huge. It was a complete failure because I started to rewrite it again. I just needed a little boost or something. Draft, draft, draft. That's what yeah. I've learned. <laughs> write it once. You think it's amazing. Start over and write it again. <laughs> Essentially. Yeah. All right. 
one more question. These are my own personal ones that I made up, and it is one through 12. Oh, uh, one. What's the last good book you read? Ooh, um, I'm reading Girlfriend's Guide to Pregnancy right now. <laughs> um, that's actually... And that's a kicker. Uh, but uh, what happens in that book? Yeah, that's, it's, it's actually a good book. Oh, my God. Uh, you know, I reread The Alchemist. I love that book. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, and I Hello, it's one of yeah. my favorites. And I thought that it was corny and, and awful when I first read it. And then I reread it and I, I totally understood it again the second time around. The first time around I was like, this is ridiculous. It's about a woman, boom, threw it across the room. Yes. And then I was like, oh, I got it, second time around. Love nice. That, that is Paulo Coelho. I don't know, personally, I'm biased. <laughs> He's one of my favorites. So please, uh, well, she's going to stay up here. She's got another story for us. So, Ms. Emma, go ahead, lady. Take it away. I feel like I'm bumming you out. Am I bumming you out? No, no, no. All right. All right. My sisters and I were playing on the farm where we grew up in Australia. And we were, we were hiking along this, this mountaineera, mountainous plain in our heads and, and along a stream that ran past our chicken shed or chook shed, as we called it. Now, that's what we felt we were doing. But in actual fact, it's not even a stream, it's just a trickle, and there's no mountains. But we were exploring, we were pretending to be explorers, and we had big sticks, and we were hiking and poking at things, and we were looking for treasure. I was about 10, and we poke around for a while in this cavernous Lord of the Rings type experience, which really it wasn't, um, and we come across, we hit gold. We see a baby bird. Oh, this is huge. I mean, he was uh, barely chirping. He hardly had um, feathers or he was, you could still see his skin. And we whisked him up and we ran back to the house shouting, Mom! And we showed my mother, who is the guru of all things animal. And she quietly examined the baby bird and when she gave a nod, we knew that we could keep him. And so she got out a cardboard box and she put in an old t-shirt, one of our old t-shirts, and she put the baby bird in there and snuggled him up. And I thought that was so weird because he doesn't live in a t-shirt normally. <laughs> so I went out to get him other things that I thought that he would like, something to make him feel at home. And I got eucalyptus leaves, but the brand new ones that are still kind of light green and they smell so good and they're so soft. And then I went to the chook pen and I got uh, feathers, but not the feathers from on top of the hen, but the feathers underneath the underbelly ones and they're so soft and I got a couple of those and I got some flowers and I got a little bit of straw and then I went back to the box and I wove them in and outside of the, of the t-shirt because I was pretty sure he missed his mom. And then I asked my mom, why would he try to fly if he didn't even have wings yet? And she said, oh, honey, that's probably not what happened. Um, he probably got nudged out of the nest by his mama. I, I was shocked. Why would a mother do that? And she said, oh, sweetheart, it's just nature's way. I judged this mother bird harshly, but now from one mother to another, I understand her a little bit more. So I've been spending the better part of my young adult life trying not to get pregnant. I don't know if you felt your son found yourself in this experience, but earlier on it was because I didn't want to have a baby from a one night stand with a bartender on the Lower East Side, and, and well later it was because, well, I just, wasn't ready and also people who had babies had like 401ks and houses <laughs> and people actually genuinely seem to be there are people who genuinely love children and, re, and I love children but they really like crave to be a parent and like really really want that and I'd been a nanny and a babysitter and a, and a teaching artist and I love kids but I didn't have that like ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum thing it wasn't completely out of the picture, but it was way down the track. Way down the track. So I was shocked 
to say the least, when I saw those two little pink stripes show up on that pregnancy test. I had gotten a pack of 300 ovulation and pregnancy strips from a friend who had gotten them off the internet when she was trying to get pregnant, and I took them off her hands for the exact opposite reason. I took a deep breath and I thought, you know what, this is okay, this is okay, this is okay, because there's 299 more and they can't all be positive. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is fine. And eight into it, eight, they all lined up on the, the bathroom sink and they all look like little equal signs, little pink equals. And I counted them, equals, 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 pregnant. And like I was an, on an episode of Teen Mom, I slid down the wall and <laughs> fell into a pool of tears. I was acting like I'd gotten knocked up by a neighborhood boy, but I'm 37 and married. And I sobbed and I sobbed and I sobbed and I, I knew that what I was experiencing was not the norm mm -hmm. and so I kept it to myself. I did, however, console Google for a couple of things and I found myself in this mommy land of pastels and baby ducks and rattles and trucks and shit and I was like, I couldn't handle it. There was this one site where this woman, it was an online a bulletin board thing, and you could post comments, and this mother had, her username was Leo and Chloe's mom. And I was immediately nauseous. And it wasn't just the morning sickness. And I knew in that moment that the reason I was so hesitant to have a baby wasn't because I didn't have a 401k or I didn't have a house, it was because I hadn't become the person I wanted to become yet, and now I was just going to be Leo or Chloe's mom. So I kept taking my prenatal vitamins, and I was sticking to a strict diet of just white bread, which is all I could keep down. And I was tired. I was the kind of tired when you you look at a, a, a subway platform and you could fall asleep right then and there. So if it wasn't for the nausea and the exhaustion, uh, I could almost have forgotten that, I, that this was even happening. And then I started to bleed. And I knew what was happening. I had even hoped for this thing to happen the day that I sobbed on the bathroom floor. I thought, it's nature's way. And I thought I would feel relief in that moment, but I didn't. But I also didn't get a wave of maternal instinct and all of a sudden do a 180. I didn't feel that at all, but I did feel something and the thing that came to me was just stay. I don't know why, I don't even know why I'm feeling this, but just stay. And then I knew exactly what to do. In my mind, I went and I picked a eucalyptus leaf, the new ones that smell really good, that are really soft, and I gave it to the baby. And then I went and I got some feathers from the chukyard, but not the top feathers that are hard, the ones under the underbelly ones that are soft. And then I gave it to the baby, stay. And then I went and I got a couple of flowers and, and a couple of petals and some straw, stay with me. I don't know why, just stick around. I was nesting in the true sense of the word. And he did stay. And recently, a woman at the doctor's office had to take blood. And she said to me, is this your first? And I nodded. And she said, oh my god, are you so excited? <laughs> And I said, no, <laughs> not at all, but I am in awe. 
And whatever I'm going to become and he's going to become, we'll do it together and everything's going to be okay. We're going to follow up with you in November of 2032 to see how that went. <laughs> So I just uh, want to take a minute. We have another segment. It's called Edit Kid. Edit Kid. Because I've noticed a lot of things in this city that really get on my nerves. And I take it upon myself to fix those. So very quickly, going to throw this out there. In case anybody has any questions, you can always write us too. When you are invited to a party and you ask your host, hey, do you know, you know, is it okay if I invite maybe a couple other people to your party? Because you always ask the host, right? And they say, yeah, sure, it's okay. Therefore, you are now an invited guest of somebody who's invited to that party. You cannot go invite 25 more of your friends. I feel like I need to mention this <laughs> to some people that are watching um, because it is just not really cool. So that's my little edit kit, edit kit for the day. I also want to give a really quick shout out and a thank you to Tanya and Taryn and Hannah today for making our great menu and the joint for letting us have our show here. As always, you can um, find everything about our show out at www.missstephaniesshouse.com. Um, you can ask us questions if you have questions about etiquette, um, or just tune in and find some great recipes as well. So, um, unfortunately, I'm not sure what happened to Alejandro. Um, I'm sure we'll figure that out sometime, but during Emma's story, you guys, I found another band. So, luckily, Jorge Miguel is available to come up here and play some other tunes for us. Put it together for Jorge Miguel. <laughs> Hello, we are. Songs that we like, and songs that we hope that you like. No, they, okay, I forgot the most important part. Introducing the first Hispanic George Michael cover band ever in the history of the galaxy. Jorge, 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 Jorge. Miguel. As the music dies, something in your eyes reminds me of the silver screen and all that said goodbye. Tonight the music seems so loud I wish that we could something some this crowd Never learned the words to this verse I didn't think we were gonna make it this far We should have been so good together We could have made this last forever And I Yo no como a bailar jamás, pies culpable no tienen ritmo, es fácil de fingir, sé que no eres un tonto, pero tú eres un tonto, lo hubiera sabido mejor de decir a algún amigo para perder la oportunidad que me han dado, no nunca voy a bailar jamás, la manera que bailo contigo, Alejandro.
to bring to the stage the only person in the room sexier than Alejandro and I. You're sorry, my sex chicken won't do. Miss Stephanie! appropriate person to sing this song as well. <laughs> That's all I wanted to something something special in your eyes for just one moment to be bold and naked, naked. at your side sometimes I think that you'll never understand me understand me Maybe this time is forever, but it can't be. That's all you wanted, something special, someone sacred in your life. For just one moment, to be warm and naked. Naked, Sometimes I think that you'll never Understand me. Understand me. But something tells me together we be happy. I will be your father figure. Put your tiny hand in mine. I will be your preacher, teacher. Anything you have in mind. I will be your father figure. I have had enough of crying. I will be the one who loves you. Till the end of time. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the third most beautiful person in this room, Miss Stephanie. I can't compete with you guys. I just got a Mac, you know, like I'm slowly moving into the 2000s. Here we go. Don't know what the hell you want from me. I'm not pregnant. 
No, I'm not pregnant. Somebody tell me, won't you tell me now? Tiene una canción que viene de un lugar muy lejos, no tan lejos de aquí al sur, de México. Una canción de amor que lo voy a dar a toda la gente aquí. Y se llama Cielito Lindo. De la sierra morena, cielito lindo viene bajando. Un par de ojitos negros, cielito lindo de contrabando. Ops. Ay, 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 ay. Canta y no llores, porque cantando se alegra el cielito lindo mis corazones. Otra vez, un momento. Ay, 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 ay. Canta y no llores. Porque cantando se alegra el cielito lindo los corazones. Ese lunar que tiene cielito lindo junta a la boca, así como yo tengo. No se lo des a nadie, cielito lindo que a mí me toca. Ay, 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 canta y no llores. Porque cantando se alegra el cielito lindo los corazones. Canta todo, todo. Ay, 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 ay. Canta no llores. Porque cantando se alegra el cielito lindo los corazones. Muchas gracias aquí a la gente de Brooklyn que les, les quiero mucho realmente. Esta canción viene del fondo de mi corazón. Y ahora quiero hacer otra canción que viene de un animal muy universal en todo el mundo que tú le conoces. Si alguien quiere nuclear, ¡pa! Se va a quedar ahí ese animal. Entonces, esta canción se llama La Cucaracha. La Cucaracha, la Cucaracha. Ya no puede caminar porque le falta que no tiene las dos patitas de atrás. La cucaracha, la cucaracha, ya no puede caminar porque le falta, porque no tiene marihuana para fumar. Esa canción viene realmente del, de la revolución de México. Viva la revolución, Pacho y Vila, con grandes bigotes más grandes que el mío. 
Mm. Es un animal muy necio y te digo un poco de cucaracha, no me gusta. La, la maldita cucaracha es un animal muy necio. Se, siempre te la pata en la guerra y en comercio. La cucaracha ya recién se murió y con cuatro sopiteles y un rato San Cristán. La cucaracha, la cucaracha, ya no puede caminar porque le falta, porque no tiene la tapatita de atrás. La cucaracha, la cucaracha, ya no puede caminar porque le falta, porque no tiene marihuana para, marihuana para, marihuana para fumar. We had to stretch out the set a little bit. <laughs> I touch your lips and all at once the sparks go flying. Ghost of the lips that know so well the art of lying. You know I see the danger, still the sparks go higher. You know I'm not surrendered to this kiss of fire. Just like a torch, my kiss is set your soul up burning. I can't go on, this is a road of no turn. And though it burns me and it turns me into ashes, my whole world crashes without your kiss of fire. I can't resist you, what good is there in trying? What good is there denying? You're all that I desire. When I first kissed you, my heart was yours completely. If I'm a slave, then it's a slave I want to be. No pity me, no pity me. And those lips, say lips, you won't let me borrow. Help me tonight, let the devil take tomorrow. And though it burns me and it turns me into ashes, my homework crashes without your kiss of fire. This isn't a George Michael song either. Resist you, what good is there in trying? What good is there denying? You're all that I desire. When I first kissed you, my heart was yours completely. If I'm a slave, then it's a slave. also not a song by George Michael, just in case that's what you were expecting. Mm. I'm feeling mighty lonesome, I haven't slept a week. I walk the floor and watch the door, and in between I drink blue star coffee. Love 
was a hand-me-down broom I'll never know a Sunday in this weekday room I'm talking to the shadows one o'clock to four and Lord, how slow the moments go when all I do is pour black coffee. Since the blues caught my eye, I'm hanging out on Monday, my Sunday dreams to dry. Now a man is born to go a-loving A woman's born to weep and fret To stay at home and tend her oven And drown her past regrets In coffee and cigarettes I'm moaning all the morning and morning all the night and oh how slow the moments go and i can't get it right oh black coffee oh it since love left me oh it's driving me crazy but my baby maybe woman's born to weep and fret, to stay at home and tend her oven, and drown her past regrets in coffee and cigarettes. I'm mourning all the morning and mourning all the night, and in between it's nicotine. And not much heart to light black coffee Feeling low as the ground Driving me crazy This waiting for my baby To someday come around Ooh, the someday Thank you. Well, we got one more for you guys. It's um, Oates' favorite song, actually. I don't want to throw that out there. But um, I would like to say a big, huge thank you for Tanya and Taryn for letting us have our show here at The Joint on Myrtle. Thank you so much, Emma Gordon, for coming and sharing your wonderful stories with us. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Micah. And thank you all, everybody, for coming out tonight. As always, Miss Stephanie's House will be back here December 7th. We have a great, powerful show for you then as well. And uh, we're going to go out with your favorite song. How's that? passes goes out. When she walks, it's just like a samba that swings so cool and sways so gentle that when she passes each one, she passes goes out. Oh, how I watch 